Hi, I'm Lasia Clarendon of the New York Liberty, and I represent the WNBPA and the WNBA players. And when the Jobs for Justice organization reached out to us this year to honor us with the 2020 Eleanor Roosevelt Award, we were floored and honored um, and humbled in so many ways. They talked about the CBA work we've done this past year to negotiate a historic CBA um, for women's sports. And so thank you. We are so honored. We accept with open arms, proudly. But more than that, um, it's not simply receiving this award, uh, just another award that we're having the opportunity to receive. This really propels the social justice initiatives that we already wanted to do forward this season, um, solidifies reminds us why we do this work and why we've always stayed close to the ground with this work and made it about, not about the recognition, but about the impact that we want to have as players from a grassroots level. And we're in this moment in time where you're starting to hear this rallying cry, right? Follow black women. It's like the world has finally awakened to the superpower that black women are, the amazingness that we are, the leadership that we bring, how forward thinking we've always been. And so there's been this rallying cry to follow black women. Our league is 80% black women. <laughs> we have a lot of queer women in our league. And it's not merely because our league is 80% black women and the statistics match up. It's because our league has always done the work. We have always been on the forefront of social movements. We were among the first to stand to kneel with Colin Kaepernick, but didn't always get the credit for it, similar to black women in history. Some ideas we have this season for some social justice initiatives and how we think we can make a really big impact. Um, as we know players have a platform, we have this moment and we know um, with the WNBA's return to play, we will have 144 players all in one site, which literally never happens. And so we think there's such a powerful moment to capitalize on, you know, having a Black Lives Matter court, having a court that has this symbol, that has these words that are so impactful or so meaningful that you're seeing everywhere at this moment that people are finally catching up to, to try and help realize how much Black lives have not mattered in this country to make that a known statement. Um, and so that is like one awesome idea that players are really rallying behind. Another one is we know that black women always show up, right? For black men, we have to often choose maybe our race over our gender. And so we're the ones marching for numerous men who are murdered. And we're finally, finally, finally seeing people stand up for black women. We're finally seeing the light click on a little bit. We're finally seeing like we can have a march for black trans women that have been murdered at higher rates. We're finally seeing people wake up to the pain and the struggle that we've endured. And so another initiative we want to do or another idea would be to possibly like dedicate the season to Breonna Taylor or to, you know, hashtag say her name because there's so many of us that are still forgotten. There's so many stories that go untold, similar to how our stories go untold. And we see Brianna Taylor at EMT, literally murdered in her home. Like that's for black women, what black men feel for, for George Floyd. We feel that could have been us. And so dedicating the season to say her name would be a phenomenal, you know, nod and a phenomenal, um, just push from our end that we see you, we see each other, like that 80% of us that are out there on the court that play, that make up this phenomenal league we see you and to every black woman to every black trans woman out there that is forgotten sandra bland never got justice um there's so many so many names that have never received justice that we see you another ideas are potentially <clears throat> excuse me having like a podcast is we're in the clean site in the bubble having you know educational programs where it's so important to make sure people understand and know the history behind these movements, understand the history behind policing. And so you have to educate people, one. So there's a big opportunity there. And then you figure out how to catalyze, 
how to put into action what people now know and organize and to make the effort. So we want to make sure that there's an opportunity for players, um, of course, to be involved in the very specific initiatives around Black Lives Matter and raising awareness and staying close to the ground. And we actually have an opportunity to work with Alicia Garza, who's phenomenal, one of the founders of Black Lives Matter. And so making sure we're connected with her, staying close to the ground and a grassroots level um, to be engaged, but also to make sure players have an opportunity to get involved in, you know, different lanes. Some people, immigration is, they're super passionate about. For some people, it's voting. Um, for some people, it's houselessness and poverty. Um, some people, it's the school to prison pipeline. So making sure we have such a wide range of people who have passions, but so many of us, I would, I would argue, you could argue 144 of us truly do care about some type of, of initiative, some type of social justice work that we get an opportunity to get involved um, across the lane. We have a huge election coming up, and we know voter suppression has been a way to keep people out of office, to keep you know the diversity of this country from taking their voice back. And so that's going to be a huge, huge initiative this year, too, that we fight to make sure we can have um, you know a fair fight, as Stacey Abrams always says, when we go to the polls, we get opportunity for people um, to be able to have mail-in voting all while we're in the middle of a pandemic. And so we are so, so honored to receive this award and know that it is it will not go in vain. We will keep doing the work as we always have done the work. Thank you and appreciate it.